And we begin with 1983's Donald Duck's speedboat for the Atari 2600 or Atari VCS, depending on from whence you hail. Um, wow, yeah, okay. This is uh, not speedy. There, there is a boat, and you do play as Donald Duck. He is riding the boat, so that is accurate, but honestly not, not much else is. I, I've got to be honest, I, was, I found this one quite inscrutable. Um... I am dodging some rocks there, I, I, I guess. It's uh, really quite the baffling game. Uh, more rocks, better better watch out for those. Yeah, I, I don't know in what world this could be considered a speedboat. This is more like one of those boats which is in the shape of a swan that you ride at theme parks. It's, it's achingly, painfully slow. And now I figure that this is some kind of, um, like, social criticism with regards to pollution. It's uh, really quite astonishing just how boring this game actually is to look at and talk about. Oh, there we go, there's the nephews. Oh, this one's great. It is mental, but it's actually not the most mental thing that there's going to be. It's inexplicably a Japan-only Donald Duck sports game in which you compete in uh, various events to win a fake medal. Um, it's wonderfully crap. I really like it. The first one is the sack race, and basically you just hit A sort of rhythmically um, to make your way on this sack race, where you seem to be racing against Daisy, which I love because it's just kind of like... She see that there really aren't any other opponents. There's not, you don't like like Gladstone or like the Beagle Boys. It's just Daisy, so it's just you versus your girlfriend, just ruining her. It's great. And there's these weird little things popping out of the manholes. It's just like the worst place to do a sack race ever. The dumbest thing is if you get a decent enough lead on Daisy, um, whichever nephew that is, Huey probably pushes her forward with a big broom. So basically, he's cheating. He's a wanker. There's this one which I like to call Gondola Beatdown, in which you beat the shit out of Daisy on a gondola. I have no idea what's going on here, and I wasn't sure even what my button presses were doing. I was more or less mashing buttons and pushing forward, vaguely rhythmically again, and eventually I just won. Uh, I don't understand what's going on in the slightest, and I don't know why he's given his girlfriend such a seeing to. This one is, and I'm totally serious, throwing a Wellington boot. You're just lobbing a welly. There it goes. Brilliant. <laughs> then he goes to measure it. <laughs> this game's awesome. Oh, five meters, that's a terrible throw. I wonder if I can do better. Absolute anus. Oh, I love this. Go, throw that welly boot. Yeah, throw it, come on. Wow, I really wound this one up. Yay! Come on, tell me I beat five meters this time. Five meters. Nope, it's impossible to throw a Wellington boot more than five meters. Quality game. This one's great too, it's like the pizza stacking game, you have to walk the length of this sort of courtyard while you're carrying this big tower of pizza who's just <laughs> dropping them all over the place. It's actually a steady ghost, fuck shit. Oh, I love it. He's just desperate, he's only got like a handful of pizzas left and he's just running, he's like, oh come on, I really want to eat these. I'm so hungry. Oh, my pizzas. <laughs> what a stupid game. Oh, uh, uh, this is a genuine joy. There's this pole vaulting game which is uh, insanely difficult and I wasn't able to get a single good vault off. Uh, nearly though. <laughs> See, what are you supposed to do? I don't get it. <laughs> See, like, it's ridiculous. And then lastly, uh, there's this impossible pogo stick one that no human could conceivably do. Uh, I've never managed to get past more than two barriers. I don't think it's possible. My mind's out the gutter. This is the Lucky Dime Caper for the Sega Master System. I love the balls off of this game. The little crispy duck balls. It is fantastic. You know, it's a fairly standard sort of a platformer, but one of those ones that's just really well put together that the Master System had a, quite a lot of, actually. Just games that weren't necessarily um, changing the whole paradigm of the genre, as an arsehole would say, but they were, you know, just solid, enjoyable well-made, well-put-together, brilliantly designed experiences, like you've got this, the Alex Kidd games, apart from High Tech World, which can chow down on my balls, 
the Sonic titles, Castle of Illusion, Land of Illusion, Psycho Fox, quite a lot. Anyway, in this game, you more or less walk around with a hammer, smashing the hell out of everything that moves. It's fabulous. Uh, everything you smash is going to drop like a little power-up, uh, usually a star, which increases the speed that you swing the hammer, which can become sort of entertainingly ludicrous. But if you pick up too many, it resets the speed and makes you invincible for a while, which is actually really bad. You are very well defended with the very fast hammers, and you really want to hang on to those and not go invincible. It's not a great trade-off. You can also pick up a frisbee, which is a throwing weapon, which would so should sound good, but it's not as good as the hammer, because the hammer, when it's out, is basically a big shield in front of you that kills stuff. True to type, it's not a very long game. It's only about... Uh, I believe it's seven levels. There's six, and then there's like the final castle. Uh, it's Donald against uh, Magic and Dispel from the uh, DuckTales cartoon, and possibly from the Carl Barks comics. I don't know if she was in those, I assume she was, I didn't read them because I am from England. It's really great stuff, you can pick your levels in sort of two tiers of three stages. Um, they're all brilliant, I've got nothing bad to say about it. It's fantastic, and it's forgotten, and I really recommend you give it a go. Quackshot is a classic Disney platformer. There's no two ways about it, it's just a brilliant, brilliant game um, in which you obviously, given the theme of the show, play as Donald and you have to go around uh, various different locations such as Duckburg, Mexico and uh, Transylvania and you have to use this plunger gun to uh, defeat enemies, uh, pick up items and uh, then use the items in various other places. There's a sort of what would nowadays be termed as a very, very loose Metroidvania structure to the game, that is to say you go back and forth from level to level with any new abilities you pick up will allow you to access new areas in the older levels that you may have already been through once. But it doesn't have an egregious amount of backtracking because there's a sort of a checkpointing system wherein when you get to certain points in each stage you can put down a flag that the plane can then come and pick you up and so when you return you'll be at that point rather than at the beginning of the level again. But it's uh, full of situations, for example in Duckburg you can't go any further so you go on to Mexico and in Mexico you find a, uh, a door that can't be opened without the use of a particular key and then if you go back to Duckburg again You'll be the, the explorer lady that you meet there has the key, it gives it to you, which allows you to go into the pyramid level, uh, which is hidden in Mexico for some reason I don't really understand. Um, <laughs> but I'm not complaining. There's plenty of just brilliantly designed platforming and great, great set pieces. The graphics are just fabulous, just glancing at it. I mean, the backgrounds in particular are really great, I think. Um, and the sprites are huge and full of character, and though the sprites are big, you never really feel like they're too big. You don't feel like you can't maneuver your character. The abilities that you pick up, I think, are interesting and diversify the gameplay. Like, for a start, for a start you can pick up popcorn, which you, can just, you sort of shoot it three-way like a spread gun, which I think is pretty odd, but I'm not going to complain. Uh, you also get bubble gun, which you use to destroy certain walls, and you'd have to do that in Transylvania to proceed at one point. Um, but you also can pick up different colored plungers, and I can't actually remember what the later ones do, but the first one, I mean, you start with the yellow plunger that can freeze enemies, and then afterwards you can get a green plunger quite early on, and that sticks to walls, and then you can stand on it, which is something that uh, the Mega Man series actually used later on with the Super Arrow power, which I believe was in either 5 or 6, and I'm leaning towards 5. Uh, I mean, this game has a fair amount in common with Mega Man in the sense that you are picking up new abilities and weapons and stuff, and you are visiting various different stages, although, of course, in Mega Man you don't go back and forth. But it's got basically the same controls. You've got jump, and you've got shoot, and you've got slide. Um, so it does have a fair amount in common with that series as well. Though, honestly, I would say Quack Shot. It's not quite as breezy as the Mega Man games, but in a lot of ways it really is just as good. It's a fantastic game. It's a really tremendous for a license especially, it's just from that era that Franchise and Lowe's wants to celebrate and of course uh, venerate in some cases, for example, most of the games that I've covered so far, particularly in the previous episode, uh, the Simpsons games, they weren't so hot. They weren't so hot, you know? But Quackshot's brilliant and uh, in fact, 
I would say most of the Donald Duck games that I've played are pretty good from this era. Uh, yeah, Quackshot, it's probably the best game in this lineup. Deep Duck Trouble is another Master System game, and ostensibly the follow-up to Lucky Lime Caper, though I don't think it shares the same developers. It's a weird little game, it's actually got quite a lot in common with uh, the DuckTales games released on the NES. Uh, there's no pogo jump, but uh, you kick rocks and uh, treasure chests along the ground in a way that's uh, very much similar to DuckTales. Uh, it even releases hidden ice creams and stuff, so it seems to be appropriating those mechanics in a roundabout sort of a way. It's a very slow-paced and quite methodical platformer compared to the Lucky Dime Caper, and it's not as good, but that doesn't mean it's bad, it's very playable, and uh, sometimes it's nice to slow down a bit. I'm not going to say too much about it, because um, it's not the most remarkable game. Uh, there's a part towards the end which is very impossible, which I will warn you about, um, but I won't give you too much information. Let's just say you'll know when you're there, because you'll start dying, and up to that point you won't more or less get hit or lose any lives, because it's very simple. Uh, I'm probably making a meal of it in this footage though. There's also this part where you have to jump on the back of rampaging ostriches, which reminds me very much of Sunset Riders. Oh god, it's a water level. Donald Duck no Maho no Boshi, uh, I'm not very good at Japanese, is a uh, Japan-only uh, Super Famicom game. And, well, I looked up what Maho no Boshi means, and Maho means magic, and Boshi apparently means dead child, so yeah, it probably doesn't mean that, it probably means hat, but it definitely gave the first answer as dead child. So I choose to believe this is a game about Donald Duck pursuing is uh, dead child, and it ends up a bit like the movie Don't Look Now. Sorry for spoiling the movie, Don't Look Now. Anyway, this is a bit of a gem, I think, uh, though the best thing about it is in the opening, Donald is walking along behind Daisy and just totally checking out her art. I mean, look, look at him, he's just like, DAMN! I can't really do the Donald Duck voice. I can't imagine what that would sound like. Anyway, the basic premise is, for a start, he is uh, doing a load of odd jobs, uh, and you can pick between them. Um, the first odd job I picked seems to be appearing in some kind of Takeshi's Castle style, uh, <laughs> sort of vaguely macabre game show, um, which is uh, surprisingly quite difficult, although I did get it on my second go. It's just the fact that I wasn't aware there was a run button and some of the jumping it asks you to do against a sort of strict time limit is actually kind of tricky. Although I love this stuff uh, with the sharks, it really does amuse me that the sharks aren't really harmful to you. They kind of are a sort of propellant, you know? <laughs> They're very useful. Uh, another one is a uh, George Formby style window cleaning mini game, which should be awful, but it's actually kind of enjoyable in a way because all it is is basic platform mechanics and uh, window cleaning. Uh, I'd say it's probably the second best window cleaning simulator I've played outside of the one that came with the iToy, but that had the benefit of literally including the song When I'm Cleaning Windows by George Formby with it. Um, I'd actually put that music over this video, but I don't want YouTube's content ID to screw me over this long dead Formby song. After I'd earned enough money, the minigame sort of ended and it just became a more standard adventure platformer, which is actually rather enjoyable and good looking, as you can uh, see here. Uh, I'm really surprised this didn't get a Western release, because there's nothing really about it that stands out to me as uh, overtly, you know, Japanese that couldn't have been sort of fixed, uh, though back in these days they would usually just release those games with the weirdness in them. Uh, I guess the whole odd job premise didn't leap out at gamers who were more versed in, uh, you know, stuff like Donkey Kong Country or the sort of plotless Mario. It's not like Mario just went out to, you know, do odd jobs. Donald Duck in Maui Mallard, or Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow, depending on what format you're picking it up for, uh, it was released on Mega Drive or Genesis, Super Nintendo, and on the PC. It was also released on a Game Boy, but that's a completely different and much shitter game. Here I'm covering the Mega Drive version because, for a start, it's better, and second, I will always cover the Mega Drive version because it will, in 99% of multi-format cases, be better. And before SNES fanboys start calling me a cunt or whatever, uh, get over yourselves, your machine had 
millions of great first party and uh, original unique games. It is a great system, but multi format games tended to play better on the Mega Drive, which was obviously the lead format for them. Pointing that out is not an offence to you, hopefully, it's not an insult to the system that you grew up with. If you take people's opinions and knowledge about games as some kind of affront to your sensibilities, you're an idiot and you should be institutionalised for the protection of others, and you're probably going to murder a baby one day. Just cold crush it with your foot. Anyway, Maui Mallard is an excellent video game. Um, again, it's very much unknown, and I would recommend it highly. It's a very late 16-bit uh, platformer and it takes quite a few cues from games like Pitfall and Mine Adventure and uh, Earthworm Jim. It's got that big animation style, uh, sort of like the original Disney's Aladdin for the Mega Drive as well. It looks excellent and at first it doesn't seem that good but then it sort of reveals its, its complexity and intricate levels of design a bit later on. It's very difficult as well, especially at the beginning when you're not really sure what you're doing, because uh, the game doesn't do a great job of saying sort of like, hey, you can do this now. It's not a perfect game, but it's a really interesting one. So I would say definitely give it a go. I'll tell you a little bit more though. Mainly you play as Maui Mallard, which is basically Donald Duck acting as a kind of private investigator. But uh, on later in the game, you can pick up these little yin yang icons which let you transform into Cold Shadow, which is his ninja alter ego, which lets you use this kind of bow staff like thing. It's probably not a bow staff, but I don't know shit about weapons, so whatever. Uh, you can use it to swing on little hooks, you can use it to prop yourself between two walls, and you can use it obviously to beat the pants off of people. The game is full to the brim with little secrets, uh, it's got great presentation, the music's pretty awesome. Um, it varies the gameplay really nicely, especially later on, although I wasn't actually able to uh, retrieve gameplay footage because I, I don't I don't want to use other people's footage, I wanted to do it myself, but I wasn't able to get that far into the game on this playthrough in order to show you the later levels. And also, quite honestly, I would rather that you found it for yourself because most of the joy I got from this game was getting onto certain levels and thinking to myself, oh wow, I haven't seen that before. And for me, for a 16-bit or 8-bit platformer, that's astonishing. Well, that's about it for Donald Duck games. Um, like his cartoons, in a way, uh, his efforts tend to get overshadowed by uh, the Mickey Mouse games, but uh, they're really good in many ways, more consistent than Mickey Mouse's output. Of course, there are excellent Mickey games, don't get me wrong. Uh, one of my favourite games ever is a Mickey game, but the Donald Duck games just are really all pretty good in their own way, and even when they're not good, they're very, very funny. Um, yeah, you may have noticed one or two conspicuous absences. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about them. I'll get round to them later in a different show, okay? Thank you very much for watching Franchise and Lows. See you next time. The electric beds. Oh, one more thing. The uh, Donald Duck Sports game was eventually released in the West as a Snoopy game. Yeah. And the pole vault's still impossible. <laughs>